The Wheel and the Butterfly, written by Justice 3442 and read by Justice and 3442. Chapter 13, Pinky vs. Technology. <laughs> Wowie zowie with sprinkles and a cherry on top, Twilight. You're the smartest pony ever. Light penetrated the thin sheet roof of the mighty pillow and furniture fort Dan Pie as Pinky sat cross-legged on top of a mattress inside. She had decided to wear her pink dress that had altered with a pattern of blue and yellow balloons at the bottom. The pattern helped combat the unease she felt now that her cutie mark was absent. Over the dress, she wore a small blue short-sleeved jacket and a few colorful bracelets on her wrists. Twilight smiled proudly through the small compact mirror Pinky was holding. Well, it's just transferring information and magic across the communication line here. It's not a lot different from what the mirrors are already doing. Yeah, Twilight, you're so modest. I would have never thought you could cast spells through the mirrors. Twilight's expression dropped to something more neutral. I just wish I could use the same technique to get you back. Pinky offered a consolatory smile. It's okay, Twilight. I know you'll figure it out eventually. Pinky turned to the two thin rectangular devices sitting on the mattress next to her and pointed her compact mirror in their direction. One was about a foot and a half across and another foot wide. The other was of similar dimensions, but a fraction of the size of the other. Ready, she said. Aim, was the response as a purple glow began to emanate from the tiny mirror. Fire, Pinky said with a note of excitement. A small purple energy beam fired out from the mirror and hit the two devices, which began to glow with the same purple light. The light and noise was enough to get a mangy gray cat sleeping on a pillow in a corner of the fort to wake up and give a quizzical Meow! The two devices slowly levitated a few inches off the mattress, hung for a few seconds, then lowered back to their original locations. The purple glow suddenly left the two devices and changed back into a beam that fired into the mirror held by Pinky. Pinky looked down at the mirror that was facing away from her. Got it? She asked. Got it. Mr. Mumbles trotted over from her pillow perch to swat at the two electronics briefly. When they didn't respond, she trotted out of the fort under the foosball table entrance in search of food. Pinky turned to the mirror to see Twilight using her magic to project two sets of purple and white displays consisting of tiny circles, squares with dozens of lines jutting off in every direction, lines that made long, angled journeys across a land of hundreds and hundreds of tiny dots and shapes neither Pinky nor Twilight had seen before. Pinky squinted. Yeesh, look at all these labels. Twilight sure seems to keep things orderly. Are they some sort of code? The only thing she could understand was the giant words floating over either projection. One saying computer, the other phone, which pretty much summed where Twilight's knowledge began and ended with either device, having had very limited exposure to either during her trip to her own human dimension, having not had much luck with the computers there. Pinky, this is amazing, Twilight said in, well, amazement. Who really? was Pinky's offering. Are they, like, more magic symbols or something? Twilight excitedly glanced between the two. No, Pinky, I think they're both some type of machine. Like the ones I use for analyzing in chemistry, but oh my gosh. Twilight was beaming with excitement at this point. Just way, way beyond anything in Equestria. Pinky frowned. Technology wasn't her strong suit. Dan had spent hours and hours explaining the television the two had invented in the side of Fort Dan Pie. In Dan's case, this meant hours of lecturing while Pinky struggled to stay awake, and Dan provided cross-sections and excruciatingly tried to describe every minute piece. The whole experience left Pinky with a desire to not concern herself with so much of the workings of all the new pieces of equipment she had seen before. Well, maybe Twilight explaining it wouldn't be so bad. What's all that code you have there, Twilight? Pinky asked about the numbers and letters that both displays seemed absolutely littered with. Twilight glanced back towards Pinky. I'm glad you asked, Twilight said with a wide-eyed enthusiasm. You see, Pinky, my magic detection spell can only tell me things using my own frame of reference. I don't know how what many of these things are, because I've never seen them before. However, I do understand molecular structure and chemical compounds that can be used to create devices such as these. Oh no! What you're seeing is actually a combination of my magic and understanding of the building blocks of all these components, labeling all the components of the devices. In fact, my magic and brain are working in tandem to help me understand brand new chemical compounds never before discovered in Equestria! What have I done? The code you're seeing is actually the string of periodic elements that compose all the myriad tidy elements of these devices. Furthermore, my knowledge can break these down into their atomic weight, electron configuration... Oh no, please make it stop! 
Melting point, boiling point, vaporization, put Howdy, partners! Hope we aren't interrupting nothing. Oh, thank you, Celestia! Twilight turned, and Pinky could make out with a tiny mirror that Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy were approaching the large stand-up mirror on their end. Hi, everybody! It's nice to see you all! Pinky said with an uncharacteristically large amount of enthusiasm, even for her. Twilight glanced at her three friends. You four catch up. I've got science to do! Twilight said, trotting off to another part of the very large shop she had set up in Canterlot Castle. Still haven't figured out those computer whatchamacallits, eh? Rainbow Dash asked. No, Pinky admitted. I tried pushing every button, asking nicely, asking not so nicely, demanding, screaming, threatening, begging, pleading, shaking. Pinky looked away for a second and typed her chin, trying to will her spasm with my latent psychic powers, she added, turning back to the mirror. So, everything, really. So, now it's Princess Egghead to the rescue, eh? Pinky and Applejack shared a small giggle at Rainbow's new pet name for the Lavender Alicorn friend. Yep. Yeah. Pinky said with a grin. Twilight will figure them out for sure. How is that ornery roommate of yours treating you? Applejack inquired. Much better than he used to, I hope. Fluttershy added. Pinky smiled warmly. Yeah, he's been nice. Pinky thought for a second and qualified. As nice as Dan can be, at least. I see the most awesome and amazing furniture pillow for it ever still stands. Rainbow Dash commented. Pinky smiled proudly. Yep, well, it's sort of impractical. Pinky admitted. No way! Nothing that awesome can be impractical! Rainbow countered. Well, with every piece of furniture in the apartment that wasn't nailed down used in its construction, it's sort of the only place Dan and I can hang out, so... Pinky trailed off, trying to think of the most diplomatic way to describe the situation. Almost every conversation is pretty intense with us almost always being within its inches of each other. Oh my, sounds scary. Fluttershy said. Pinky had spent much time describing her exploits in conversations with Dan, each one seemed pretty terrifying to the Yellow Pegasus. Dan had become a recurring nightmare in Fluttershy's sleep that even Princess Luna was having trouble helping her with, Luna having recently discovered that being set on dream fire was every bit as painful as being set on real fire. Pinky waved dismissively with a smile. Yeah, you get used to it. Really? really? The trio of friends asked in unison. Yeah, you really do, Pinky said with warmth in her voice. Well, he doesn't seem to be around much, Applejack stated simply. Pinky's expression went a little serious for a change. I don't think he's used to living with some, I mean, someone else, Pinky offered. He's used to having this place all to himself. Pinky thought on her daily battles with trying to keep the place tidy. It should have been easy with most of the stuff in the small apartment consolidated into a structure in the living room. Yet somehow Dan could mess it all up within minutes of coming home, forcing Pinky to start from square one every day. To Dan's credit, he seemed just as disappointed with his own inability to keep his place clean as Pinky was, so Pinky was managing to keep a lid on her frustration for the time being. I still would like to meet him and give him a piece of my mind for the things he's done to you. Nice second the motion, Rainbow Dash offered. Whoa! What does it matter? He too yelled. Dash glanced at her Pegasus friend. Chicken and talk to us? Scootaloo cried in the corner. Don't believe me. Pinky responded. It's not Dan's reaction to you that worries me. Eyes converged on Fluttershy, who whimpered quietly in response. So, how are things with you guys? Pinky asked, her smile returning as she changed the subject. My training in the Wonderbolts Academy is going awesome! Rainbow Dash answered. Spitfire says I'm the best trainee they've ever had. I'll be the, I'll be the best Wonderbolt ever pretty soon. Applejack rolled her eyes. Applejack rolled her eyes. She also said to work on that attitude of yours. <laughs> Hey, I am getting better, Rainbow Dash insisted. I didn't say I'd be captain this to- Oops. The friends shared a laugh. How's your wing pony handling things? Pinky continued. A lightning dust. Rainbow Dash thought for a second. Well, she's like me, you know? Dash offered. She's not used to being second best. Rainbow Dash paused and ended. Eh, we'll work it out. <laughs> With a hopeful smile. Pinky shifted her glance to other friends. Pinky shifted her glance to her other friends. Ooh, ooh, Ponyville doing okay? Do ponies miss me? Do they talk about me? All good, I hope. Applejack smiled. Yep, your absence has been noted by every pony, but we keep sending them your love. <laughs> Fluttershy and I are holding down the fork, keeping the apples going and the animals in line. Applejack added with pride in her voice. It is much lonelier, though. <laughs> Fluttershy added. Yeah, it's okay. I'll be back soon, Pinkie Pie assured, as much to herself as any pony. I hope so, Sugar Cube. With Rainbow Dash constantly at the Academy, 
Twilight working here, and Rarity like in Canterlot so much he's even moved some of her work here. Ponyville just ain't the same, Applejack explained. We wanted to bring her along, but I think she's at another garden party. <laughs> it's okay, Pinky said. She and I got up yesterday. She tries to see me whenever possible. Rainbow Dash made a disgusting <laughs> sound. You mean she actually finds time away from a constant rubbing elbows of every fancy unicorn here? Yep, Pinky giggled. She even finds time to make her dresses and sell them at exorbitant prices to the ponies here. They can't seem to get enough. Pinky leaned in close to the mirror and whispered, Could you maybe tell her the next thing she needs to pay attention to is her sleep? I think she may be overdoing it a bit. Tell me about it, Luttershy said. She took me to one of her fancy parties, and I had to hold her up nearly the entire time. Hold up there, partner, Applejack interrupted. Are you telling me Rarity actually invited you to one of her fancy shindigs? Fluttershy smelled sheepishly. She said my grace and poise were perfect for high society. Fluttershy frowned. It was kind of fun until one of those fancy unicorns recognized me from my modeling time. Fluttershy shuddered with the memory of being crowded at the party, an experience that mirrored her brief and unpleasant foray into modeling. They couldn't leave me alone after that. Rainbow Dash grinned. <laughs> I bet Mr. Yeah, <laughs> I bet Miss Fussy Hooves was pretty jealous. Not really. Fluttershy corrected. I think her friends like her even more now that they know she's best friends with an ex-model. Plus she sort of passed out on the hors d'oeuvres table while every pony was hounding me. The four friends shared another big laugh. Pinky cocked her head to the side as she heard footsteps slowly approach the apartment door, a familiar grumpy voice accompanying them. Ooh, gotta go! I love you all! Give Ponyville my love too, will ya? The trio waved through the small mirror. Well do, sugar cube. <laughs> Applejack replied as Pinky shut the compact mirror. Pinky heard the door open as Dan walked in. All right, I'll tell her, she heard Dan say. She saw the familiar face of her room slash fortmate lean down through the entrance. Get out of there, will ya? Dan said. We're heading out. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 the end. Comment, please. If you comment, I'll cry.